Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And today I'm going to continue my journey through QuickBooks. I'm setting up QuickBooks right from start and I'm just trying to document everything as I go. And now we're to the part I, I, in a previous video, I set up my QuickBooks in order to receive donations and now I'm going to start receiving them. I'm going to enter in some old data that I had and there's a little bit of a trick to it. So you're going to want to pay attention, especially to the very end, because I'm going to show you then how after you enter in all these donations, how you end up clearing them, um, reconciling them to the bank. So, all right, let's go to it. All right, from last time where we let, left off, I had imported all my donors in, so all my members. And one of the things you'll notice, and this might not be the same for, for you, but I have some organizations there. And I don't want the contact person's name there. I want the organization's name there. So you can see it right there that I have Bowman Methodist Church, and then I have the, the contact there. So I'm just going to show you really quick. Um, you can notice those, by the way, by the little grayed out title there. So I'm going to click on it. And all I'm going to do is edit. And it always takes a little bit of time. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete out Holly's name. I delete it out. And then as soon as I start typing Bowman, it'll pop up. And then everything should be good. All the address, everything's good. So I'm, then I'm going to do save. And so all I did was I went ahead and went through all my list and See, here's another one. It's Watertown. And I'm going to go ahead and just, um, not going to make it inactive. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to correct it. So just go ahead and do, make if you have any of that cleanup from the import, which you might have, that's how I did it. All right, so we're almost ready for the first donation. One of the th other thing I noticed when I went to enter it is that it would ask you for a price and a rate or a quantity. And, you know, I, I don't want that. I just want to sh put in an amount. So I'm going to show you how to enter that. So you go up to the gear, up in settings, accounts and settings. And then click on sales. And it's, it's not in this section. Uh, that all looks good. It's right here. So you see right there, it says track quantity and price rate track quantity and price rate. I don't need that. I'm not selling widgets. I'm not selling hours or anything like that. I'm just receiving money for as donations. So I'm going to turn that off and then that will get me ready to enter uh, in my, all my donations. So I'm going to go ahead now and you want to go to new and sales receipt. So new and sales receipt. And then as soon as you start entering in a, Oh man, I think I did something stupid. So I think I accidentally inactivated my one of my churches. So, okay, you're going to see how to correct that. If you accidentally do the same thing I do, um, I thought I had accidentally duplicated him when I was doing my cleanup. So now I'm going to have to, un I, I super cleaned it, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, look for the inactive so I could see my inactive. Uh, so see, it's not here right now. I don't see Watertown. So I'm going to click on settings and include inactive, include inactive. And now when I go to the very end, I'm going to see that I accidentally, accidentally made them inactive. So I'm going to reinactivate them. Now I can enter in a new donation. So I'm going to do a new do donation. So I'm going to hit my sales receipt. I'm going to type in Watertown. They're going to pop right in there. And I'm going to enter in. That's the date when they made the donation. So again, I'm working in kind of old data, but um, 426.21 is when they did it. I don't really care what the receipt number is, how they make the payment. They made the payment in check. Um, and then if you have a check number, enter that in right here. <clears throat> And that should work for that. Um, then for my products and services, this is uh, just a donation from a church. So this is a donation from a church. 
and they gave five thousand and one dollars and if i wanted to i could leave a note or a memo that will go on the statement but i don't i'm just going to go ahead and do a new one and uh, i go ahead and enter in right up here and it's from this uh from me actually i had a donation for me and i'm going to put in the the donor donation date which was the second of may and this was a different one. I'm pretty sure it was either ACH or, or, no, this one was a check. And individual, and whatever the amount was, $117.56. So right now, this is the same way if it was live, but this is just old data that I want to enter in and, and bring in there because I don't have that much. So that is the general way that you do it. You do a sales receipt, and then you just keep on doing save and new and save and new and that's how you will end up eventually populating your whole uh, donation list it's it's a little clunky but it's not bad and there are integrations here that i've been playing with um, to try to reduce some of this data entry especially for those electronic donations and speaking of electronic donations what if you have electronic donations and they charge a fee so if i and that's how mine is. I started receiving electronic donations. What we use is Anadot. So I'm just going to show you an actual one. And um, you can see it goes to Anadot. It, what it, all the funds go to Anadot. And then every month they're cleared over into my main checking. But if, you, if they go directly to your checking, it's the same kind of deal. So I'm just going to choose Anadot. And it was an $80 donation, but there was a fee. There was a $3.50 fee. So what I did is I set up a product in service called bank fees. And that one, I would enter in the feed negative, minus 350. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to show up on my giving statements, but at least I know it's going to show up correctly because it shows that I received $76.50. And that, so here's how I set it up. Is I have bank fees right here. In my products and services and you can see i just called it bank fees um, i have it as a service uh, nothing else really here except for when i linked it when it says the income account i have a bank charges account in my profit and loss so it's set up as an expense so that's that's how you end up doing that and then you just save and close it and then whenever you have that fee there you can reduce the total amount given by that fee so anyway, I think that's a, I think that's a slick way to do it. Um, that way, the donor gets to, gets full credit for everything they've they've been given. I don't have to enter it in. In that case, it would have been seventy six dollars and fifty cents. I wouldn't enter it in there. I get my full eighty dollar credit, and then the fee, um, I just subtract out. And hopefully, when I do the statements, I can remove that. But I'm not there yet. All right, now here's the the fun part, I think, anyway. It's what I normally do every time I open up QuickBooks Online, you know, and I'll usually work for a client um, once a week or so. I'll go to banking, I'll click on banking, and it'll bring me all the new transactions that were recorded on the bank. I like to have my bank syncing with QuickBooks Online. And so now what happens when you go to try to uh, match a donation with what's recorded in the bank because your deposit is going to include a lot of different donations. And so let me go ahead and show you one. So I'm going to go to this $290 one. That's so what you do is you click on it and then you click find match. And once you do that, it's going to give you for the last three months, all the transactions and it's going to look for it and it, it found three of them. So I had a, a lot of other deposits out there that weren't matched yet. But it found the three that made sense. You know, they're all on the same date and they add up to the exactly the $290.91. And so when I click it, then all of a sudden that's going to disappear. So that ends up being really cool, really slick deal. And uh, the only thing you kind of watch out for is if you have an older deposit that was hanging out there um, for whatever reason. For me, I do have that because I'm, I'm trying to transfer everything over to QuickBooks from a different system that you might have to go back further than just three months. So 
but very slick, very easy to use. All right, that brings us to the end of our 10 minutes. I hope that was helpful to you. And I, I always like to show you exactly what I'm doing so you can follow along and hopefully yours looks very similar to mine. If you have tips that I missed, feel free to share them, you know, and uh, your comments are helpful to me as I'm learning as you are learning probably. And hopefully I'm helping you as you help me until next time. God bless.